Hi. I don't recall ever seeing you in here. Well, maybe it's because it's my first time in here. That's right, my mom used to do all my laundry, but I do now. <laughs> I'm what you call sans parents. Oh. I can go to a movie on a school night like that. Well, welcome to the neighborhood. What's your name? Garth, Garth Algar. What's yours? I'm Honey, Horne. Oh, okay. Miss Horne. Would you like to have dinner some night? Oh, I like to have dinner every night. TBTL. Guess what day it is? Guess what day it is? It's Friday, Friday. Gonna get down on Friday. Everybody's looking forward to the weekend. I am not gonna talk about myself. I'm gonna talk about you. And if I talk about you, I think I'm gonna talk about me. Beware of things that cost $1.99. Those are the membership dues for this club that I joined, the Columbia House Music Club. Turns out, that wasn't really even a club. It was just a business for making money. Although it is how I found my favorite band, various artists of the 80s. Oh, I see. Dirty Monkey, not okay. But Dirty Monkey Dance? I could really use a win here! Well, all right. Hello, good morning, and welcome everyone to a Friday edition of TBTL, the show that just might be too beautiful to live. Indeed, Queen. My name is Luke Burbank. I am your host. No, you don't, Oprah. Coming to you once again from beautiful Chicago, Illinois, where it is absolutely stunning fall day, blue skies, light breeze off of Lake Michigan. It's just... I'm sorry, I'm tan. I like to be tan. It just feels good. It is the uh, perfect environment for us to bring you episode 4,000 to 300, that is, 4,328 in a collector series. Let the fun begin. And... I just didn't think I'd be saying this again this week, but we've got more information for you. Can you can you verify? Can you give me some 411? Regarding these statues that have been going up around America. The first one we saw was in D.C. on the National Mall. It was a desk with a big poop emoji on it, and it was basically uh, a satirical comment on the January 6th insurrection. Then a, uh, a tiki torch went up, another... Uh, satirical comment on that whole situation in Charlottesville. And now they've gone up in Portland and Philadelphia and they're coming down. That is to say people have stolen them, destroyed them, defaced them. They're missing now. This is why we can't have nice things. So we will dig into that story a little bit. Also, <laughs> I went to a <laughs> spirit Halloween here in Chicago yesterday at uh, like just before 6 p.m. on Halloween. And it was uh, literally a major disaster. I saw things I can't unsee, but I will put that evil inside all of you and at least in, inside of your minds here on this Friday edition of the show coming up. First, though, we got to say hi to this guy, longest running Cobro of the show, maybe best known for his depictions of the tall ships. Um, I'm his best friend, also co boss. And he's known as Andrew Walsh, and he's joining me right now. Good morning, my friend. Good morning, Luke. Can I say something? You absolutely can. In Thank fact, you. if you didn't, We'd it be. would be a it would be a weird show and a quick HR meeting about yeah. level setting and goals and expectations. No, no, no. We set the levels before the show. We did a whole sound <laughs> test. Um, <laughs> I just heard that tape from not Wayne's World, but Wayne's World Two, I believe. Mm -hmm. I grabbed that somewhat randomly today. It was a mix that I'd made about a year ago, probably after watching Wayne's World 2. That's that's my guess there. Either way, I, I did grab it somewhat randomly and in a hurry today. But as I was listening to it just now, it occurred to me that it ties into an observation I had yesterday, which is we've been talking a lot about people's Halloween costumes for the past several weeks. You and I, leading up to Halloween, have been trying to predict what would be in the zeitgeist this year. I will say I saw at least, at least four different Wayne and Garth costumes in my timeline over the mm. past couple of days. 
I don't know if you've seen the same as well. So I saw some kids dressed up like Wayne and Garth. I saw, saw some adults dressed up that way. There's something about there's just that just hit this year perfectly for people who maybe came of age with that show and that those movies. I'm seeing I haven't seen as much Wayne's World stuff, but I'm seeing a lot of other stuff that was even in like the TBTL zeitgeist at the beginnings of this show. So we're going back, you know, 15 years. I mentioned yesterday to you and Veeves the idea of maybe dressing up as the little bacon kid. Mm -hmm. The bacon is good for me. Mm -hmm. And he um, so I, I saw a lot of little bacon kids. Really? And it's like, oh, yeah, I mean, may, again, that may just be my the pristine nature of my for you page on TikTok. Mm -hmm. It's it's elegantly manicured. But I saw at least five and it was typically women, which kind of added a funny layer to the whole thing. But like with the little kind of like, you know, page boy wig or whatever and the shirt and the like. What none of them had that I thought was the key to playing Little Bacon is you need a small rolling suitcase. Yeah, if, right. If you remember, they he's forgot the constantly suitcase. Constantly threatening to run away. Like I think <laughs> having bacon is that's that's uh -huh. the mistake. You know, because the thing um, is, he it, doesn't have. Oh, well, no, he's exactly. he's little bacon, but like, yeah, he doesn't yes. have bacon. He no. does have a suitcase, <laughs> and he does have a motivation to leave. Exactly. That's to me. That's the, the key prop that many of these folks were missing. But they were all young people. And uh, there's also a lot of Shrek this oh, year, okay. which, again, I think is a nostalgia play for a lot of people maybe in their late 20s and 30s. Mm -hmm. So it, it is interesting how something would be. Uh, so I guess maybe the point is that uh, you'll finally get your ray gun, Andrew, in 15 years. Oh, I saw another ray gun today. No, no, there's for for those who are saying that I was uh, and I don't I don't know who these people are. But for those who are saying I was wrong about Ray Gun, man, check are you clapping your back feeds. at the haters. I am clapping back at the haters on this Friday. Check your feeds. I have I saw another one yesterday. Somebody, I think it was maybe even our friend Katie Beck was posting photos oh, and videos it. from her workplace, and um, there was a Wednesday Adams featured prominently and a, a a Ray Gun dancing across the floor. I have to give my friend. Uh, CBS producer and all around man of arts and leisure, young Kim credit. He went as Wednesday Adams and he has mm. very long hair. Mm -hmm. um, um, and uh, which I've mentioned before, like, I mean, young is one of the more striking people that I've seen in my life. He has a very unique look. He's a very sort of stylish guy, but it'll be so funny because we'll be in like <laughs> way deep rural somewhere. Like we went to that marbles tournament in Tennessee. Oh yeah. And it's just, it's just, it's just like not a bunch of folks who have experienced like a six one Korean American dude with like a very sort of stylized mustache and long sweeping hair who's w maybe wearing some sort of either traditional garb or high fashion. Like it's just the most and young. The thing about young is that he is just comfortable anywhere he goes. And even though he is often unlike any person that the people we're talking to have experienced. And uh, but anyway, because he's got this beautiful long hair. Uh, he was when it was Wednesday Adams, and it was perfect, like the braids. And he did this funny reveal on Instagram where he was standing in kind of a sort of Adams family esque hallway, and but his back is to the camera, and the camera's pushing up on him. And then you turn it turns around, and it's Mr. Young Kim, and he's got the full. It was a I was I was like, can I grow my hair out mm -hmm. in time for next year to be Wednesday Adams, and then. I realized probably the the mood will have passed everyone by that point. Now, we are here talking about Halloween. Perfect transition into a story you want to tell here at the top of the show that is Halloween related. But I am not going to allow that to happen. I will not allow a seamless conversational transition to happen on this show. Are you Instead, saying are you saying you 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 have real questions about a seamless transition of this conversation? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I, I said to I was going to stop, in the Andrew. I said I was going to. I said maybe I was going to step back from the uh -huh. political news continuum. Yeah. And then this morning on my run, I just mainlined maybe the most anxiety-producing daily I've listened to in months, which was Jim Rutenberg on the move to decertify elections and the very real inroads that election denialists have made. And I was just, I was somewhere near. Soldier Field or whatever they call that now on Lake Michigan and I was just like do I just do I walk into the lake mm -hmm. do I just walk into the lake and just uh, you know like let the somebody else handle this mess but yeah. okay, all that I, is and I say, found myself just dip not not mainlining ugh. that kind of analysis but just dipping my toes back into some just like what you would just think of as just like you know your morning cuppa 
cup of coffee and news and found myself mm-hmm. spinning real hard on more like somewhat superficial things that I'm not even going to get into here, but but just spinning, spinning, spinning towards potentially non-freedom, as they once almost said in The well, Simpsons. Um, here's what I was going to do, though. Okay. When you were mentioned, so again, I don't trust a seamless transition into Hallow- more Halloween talk. I'm going to yank mm-hmm. us so far to the left here, but I'm hoping, or to the right, this is not political, um, but I'm going to yank this conversation away from you because I think it might give you an opportunity to explain a pop culture slash sports phenomenon to me in a way that uh, we'll all find entertaining. Um, but I'm hoping that you know what this is okay. about. When you started setting up the story about your colleague's Wednesday Adams costume, and you started saying uh-huh. it was somebody you work with at uh, CBS, I thought you were going to be talking about somebody else you work with at CBS, our friend John, whom I've met uh-huh. in person, but only, but mostly know through our uh, fun living criminals. It, it's mm-hmm. returned to glory, the fun loving criminals text chain. It um, really has. And every now and then he will uh, drop something. I consider it the Geno Smith of text chains. <laughs> well, ever since we got the naming situation, <laughs> it was under. It was seen as a bust, and then when you least expected it, you. Uh... Uh, it, it came roaring back and is actually really putting up some decent numbers. Yeah, but then the Bills came to town. But um, or no, yeah, the Bills came to town, right? I mostly listened to that game. They did. Um, all right, they listen. Sure did. You could be Andrew. You could be forgiven for not uh, knowing sonically where they were because yeah, right. Bills Mafia was That's in right. full throat. That was actually I should have I should have known right away they were at home. Because I blame that was a listener huge... Bet and to some degree Bobby Pitt. <laughs> Um, but anyway, John is a is a smart fella who is more plugged into various areas of culture and let's say arts and science too that I am not. And so sometimes he will just drop something into the text chain that I have no idea what he's referring to. Sometimes I'm like, did I miss a text that this is a that this is a reference to, or is he is his mind just sort of like kind of jazz manning out on information that he's dropping here? And he dropped something in the text chain last night that I had no idea what it meant. And I'm hoping that it's not untoward because <laughs> I'm going I'm to ask you to. To, uh, explain it to me. He said, I can't believe they shadow banned Fireman Ed. Haven't seen him once. And I was like, oh, okay, well, maybe he's having some, maybe he's on mushrooms. Maybe I'm on mushrooms. I don't mm-hmm. know what any of that means. Maybe you're on different kinds <laughs> of mushrooms that just don't really just, speak yeah, to each exactly. other. Exactly. But I just did a very, very quick Google of Fireman oh, yeah. Ed, and I see that he yeah. is indeed a real person. Neither one of us oh, were sure. tripping, apparently. Tell me about Fireman yeah. Ed and what this uh, text means. It's it's funny because I didn't actually see that text because I was doing I was literally I think on stage at wait wait so I missed it but now I've just scrolled back in the chain to look at it and it makes me laugh because I've actually been having these thoughts about Fireman Ed for a couple of weeks so Fireman Ed is a guy who is a lifelong Jets fan and he is there's a version of this guy at every NFL stadium mm-hmm. um, we had like uh, Bob the Beer Man in Seattle for the Seahawks for many years. And then, you know, there's all those those, those folks that paint them, you yeah. know, paint their faces. We had yeah. Big Low, the super fan that would yeah. hold up the sea fence. Yeah, where's Big so Low? Every... Oh, Big Low kind of stepped aside, huh? Maybe some health issues. Am I right about that? I think I think Big yeah, Big Low is, is, has suffered through various health issues over the years. Yeah. But but at, at his, you know, most visible, he was always, he's like a real large individual and he was always holding this SEA and then like a fence, C mm-hmm. fence. Yeah. Um, instead of defense for the, so every stadium, every, most teams have like a, a person who's a super fan who then kind of becomes almost like a, a an unof, unofficial mascot. And what I'll say about this is it's fun to have these people around. There is a point for most of these folks where, as to use the term we've been using a lot, Andrew, they kind of move into in their own minds real main character sure, territory. Sure, yep, of course. And and I I think so. If I remember right, the backstory is a few years ago. So fire, so fire, firefighter Ed or fireman Ed is the Jets version of this. He wears a fireman's hat that is Jets colors, and I think he leads a J E T S Jets 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 chant. Okay, but again, he's. He's a guy who, as often happens in these things, starts to really take it like a personal responsibility to motivate the team and the stadium as if like the whether or not the team will win comes down to if he's able to turn in his best performance mm-hmm. of leading the crowd, of hyping people up. Mm-hmm. And I sort of understand that instinct because sometimes I do feel like I can affect the outcome of a game like based on whether or not I eat a Totino's pizza roll before or after the kick. Precisely. So... Uh, so I, my my memory now. I don't want to um, I don't want to slander Fireman Ed, but I think 
Fireman Ed might have had some bad takes a while ago. Uh, I feel, I mean, just knowing, just knowing the geography of Long Island mm-hmm. and just fire Fireman Ed's overall, let's just say, vibe, would not be shocked to find out that he's carrying around some theories that have been yet to be proven in various areas, be, it, be they science, politics, sure. who knows, gender studies. I'm, I just remember a while ago, something kind of <laughs> like we're You know, fireman. by the way, I would watch this. I would watch Fireman Ed goes to a gender studies class. <laughs> a reboot of Back to School starring Rodney Dangerfield, but it's Fireman Ed has to go take a women's study class at Oberlin. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so anyway, I, I, you know, I, I, as a person who doesn't follow the Jets super closely, what popped out at me a couple of weeks ago was this very like self serious video that Fireman Ed put out that somehow came into my TikTok, and this is, and it was just so funny because it was like, it was him just being such a little baby about if he was on screen or not. Oh, yeah. Like, they weren't putting him on the, you know, I grew up calling it the Diamond Vision. That's what it was in the kingdom. Yeah, sure. I don't think we call it that anymore, uh-huh. but I'll just use that. Like, the the Jumbotron, if you will. This There was the funniest video, because this is a 60-year-old man who's, I believe, in the video wearing his fireman, firefighter Jets hat, and he's just talking to the camera, and again, it's like he just seems so, so just kind of petty about how much screen time he's getting at the Jets games. And, you know, I'm listen, I have the privilege, I guess, of not caring if I have screen time at the Seahawks game. This isn't something I've spent my life kind of building up to or defining myself with. So it's easy for me to be like he's being a little baby. It's a big deal to him, obviously. But there was yeah. just something about it was something about him trying to act like so serious and so sanctimonious about something that's so effing pointless. Did right. you get on the diamond vision or not? I'm looking, I'm kind of, as you're talking, I'm sort of reading ESPN articles that like things that just came out yesterday. Jet super fan fireman Ed says team is phasing him out at MetLife Stadium. It doesn't say anything about whether or not he's read any Zora Neale Hurston lately. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it also doesn't mention whether or not um, it's because, you know, there's no, no statements or anything regarding. And you know what? I want to walk that, I want to walk that back and say it might have not been that he had bad takes outside of just being mad that he wasn't getting enough love at the stadium. Mm. That might have been it. He may not have been, you know, a part of any kind of a bad, you know, take around like the vaccine or or politics. I just remember him kind of going from being like beloved character uh, that Jets fans love to like kind of feuding with people over something or feuding with the team or the ownership mm-hmm. because he was feeling like he was not getting his quote unquote due. Yeah. So I might have missed, I might have missed remember it exactly i don't want again i don't want to the guy's having a tough enough week he's shadow banned as john said i don't want (laughs) to right because and the reason i the reason he texted is because i did wait actually did the jets play last night were they also on thursday night football i was just about because i know they played against the patriots on sunday and lost and that was considered a real low point did they also play the jets beat the houston in um, Texans uh, yesterday, Texans. 21 wow. to uh, Beat 13. Beat C.J. Stroud and the Texans. That's interesting. Can That's I a... say, Can you know, th- this is going to make me persona non grata here in Seattle, possibly. Actually, I don't think that's true. I don't think anybody cares. But are are you familiar with Broccoli Man at Mariners games? Do you ever see him on the um, screen? I mean, that's where I get most of my weed before I go to the stadium is isn't that a store on Soto yeah exactly you send him an emoji with a, a yeah. pizza and a mushroom <laughs> That's right. thank you um, uh, I am not I, you know I was so I don't think I don't know if I attended the Seattle Mariners game last season Andrew which is a I thought they showed a travesty. Him on, I thought they showed him on TV too although I will say oh. I listen to more games than I see so maybe it is more of a in stadium thing all of that is to say I'm just not a big fan. I mean, maybe personally, I don't know Broccoli Man when he's outside of his Broccoli Man duties, uh, sell, you know, probably self-appointed duties. Um, but he is a man who I, I could be wrong here. I feel like he dresses in green and maybe paints himself in green and dances around. But he always brings maybe that's like at the height. Maybe that's his Sunday best. I'm not sure. But um, he does bring two crown. What do you call them? A crown of, uh-huh, of broccoli, sure. one for each hand. Nothing huge, but also not to diminish the size of the broccoli crown. But just like he goes to the store, buys two broccoli crowns, has one in each hand and just sort of dances up in like the I believe you know the, the, the sky level. 
I'm looking at photos. I'm actually into this. Yeah. When you describe Broccoli Man, I thought it was going to be somebody who would like painted their whole self green and and like had some kind of a, you know, what do they call that? Um, like a prosthetic on his head mm. that made his head look like a crown yeah. of broccoli and was possibly sponsored by the Washington Broccoli Council. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, no, this actually what I find great about this is that his commitment to the broccoli bit is just so limited. Mm -hmm. It's something any of us could do with it with, in, un, inside of four minutes going into the stadium. And somehow I respect that more than, yeah. than the full broccolization of his whole like physical self. Like I like that he's just doing the minimum. Um, he's like, I got these two stalks of broccoli or these two crowns of broccoli and I'm going to kind of groove out. Um, the question would be, and I'm again, I'm scrolling this guy's Instagram page. Yeah, he tends to I wear not. I, I thought I thought I'd seen him dressed in green before. I guess I'm wrong. He tends to wear like clothes, sometimes like somewhat outlandishly cut clothes, but not not nothing too far outside of the norm, but very 90s inspired with that sort of yes. like blue paint splash mm -hmm. with highlights of purple or something that I'm not doing a good job of describing it, but it's the type of design that just screams 1990s. Yeah, I, I will do a worse job describing it than you did, but that it's exactly right. It's a very 90s era thing. I know what you're saying. like, But again, uh, Andrew, we have to also pass this through the filter that neither of us is really that – well, this is – I'm a guy who dressed like Guy Fieri on stage last night, mm -hmm. so I don't know what I'm talking about. I was going to say neither of us are really have that kind of look at me – Gene, although maybe I do, and it's just it's just dying due to low T. You never had it, and I think you don't particularly. You aren't drawn towards it in others either. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm a look away from me kind of guy, a yeah. as he says into a microphone in a podcast that he's hosted sure. for a decade, where he just talks about his own <laughs> personal bullshit and more than a decade, Andrew. More don't than that. don't you don't you try to get out of the legal jeopardy of having been on this show now for more than a decade. <laughs> While I feel bad for Broccoli Guy catching my stray here, I do love the fact that it does bring the conversation back to dressing up and mm -hmm. um, what you just mentioned, dressing up like Guy Fieri. I, I try, here's the deal with the way I say that word. I used, to, I grew up saying Guy Fieri because I grew up with him, of course. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I know that that is not the proper way to say it. You're supposed to say Fieri, right? But then yeah. I'm uncomfortable putting that much mustard on it, as Genevieve would say. So I try <laughs> to strike it somewhere in the middle where I yeah. don't sound like I'm putting on an affectation, but I'm also uh, being true to my roots. And somewhere in the middle is not where that is supposed to land, which is why I say his name in a, in a weird way. Boy, who's the main character of Guy Fieri's story <laughs> now? <laughs> I have reverted back to just saying Fieri in the yeah. way that I just say Madrona a hill uh -huh. because uh it's it's like it it might not be correct but it's the thing that, that is more recognizable for people and it's just easier that way um although yesterday i was maybe i was more tri -fieri. i don't know it was mm. it was it was a very cobbled together situation i'll just i'll take you through my my late afternoon and early evening so after you and veeves and i got done um recording our special halloween show i had some other work to do here at the hotel and uh, uh, CBS related, Livewire related. I'm trying to power through. Oh, I want to mention too that we do have uh, two episodes of Livewire this weekend. Saturday night at the Alberta Rose Theater. Please come see us. It's part of the Portland Book Festival. And then Sunday, a matinee show. We never do this. I don't know how it's going to go. I'm usually, you know, moving slow on a Sunday morning at 10 a.m., but it's a matinee show at the uh, Reeser in Beaverton. But I've, so anyway, I was doing all this work this afternoon, yesterday afternoon, and I, what I wasn't doing, was figuring out my costume situation. I had started this thing with the Wait, Wait folks. I thought I had started something, which was, hey, if I dress up, I mean, really what it was, Andrew, was I wanted to get permission from the producers because what I didn't want to do was show up in a costume and then have them be kind of put off by it because either it was a distraction mm -hmm. or it would mess with the microphone or it's the kind of thing where one of the other panelists is referring to it. But of course, the show doesn't air until Saturday. Halloween is over. I'm a radio professional. I can remember that, but not everyone on the panel is. And I just so I checked in with the producers. Hey, would it well, you care also, if I dress up? Sorry to interrupt, but there was also um, you had sort of explained this on yesterday's show. But like there was also like it sounded like an expectation now that the other panelists were going to dress up as well. But you might not have had total confirmation on that. Is that where were you also walking yeah. into that situation? Yeah. So what happened was, yeah, I, I floated the idea really mo more just to make sure it would. Like, if I decide to do this, would everybody be cool with it or would everybody not be cool with it? In which case, that's fine. It's one less thing for me to think about. And the response was, oh, that sounds fun. And actually, um, 
Emmy is going to dress up. One of the other panelists this week is Emmy Blotnick, the funny comedian, and then Brian Babylon, the comedian as well, is going to be on. They're like, Emmy's going to dress up, and uh, and we're going to do a whole thing. And so then I was like, oh, great. Well, now this went from me just being like, is it cool if I do this to like, well, now if I don't do it, I'm kind of mm-hmm. – I'm, I'm, I started this thing, and then if I show up in street clothes, it's like that's kind of a lame move by me. So I got my Fireman Ed outfit together, <laughs> and um, God, that would have been a, just a freaking genius poll for last night. That would have been <laughs> just go out incredible there. I just timing. Keep, just keep asking, why am I not on the screen, guys? Why am I not on the screen? <clears throat> anyway, so all this comes to a head at about 5 30 local time and i realized like i got to be over at the theater pretty soon i still don't have an outfit i got to get over to that spirit halloween and so i jump in a lift i go to the spirit halloween on canal in chinatown uh here in chicago and um i i'm trying i can't seem to find it because of course famously spirit halloween locations are kind of the hermit crab of the american retail industry they just move into you know the wreckage of an auto zone or something. Although in this case, it was in the interior of a mall and there was a hastily like zip tied uh, vinyl banner that said spirit Halloween outside. But then when you went into the mall, I couldn't find, there was a DSW, there was a Mervyn's, there was a variety of things. None of them were the spirit Halloween. I was like, Oh, I need to find out which one of your, which one of your compatriots, which one of your retail locations failed yeah. most recently yeah <laughs> like you know what i mean like you have the survivors you've got your dsw and your mervids they're hanging on by a thread you've got your five below and it's like Ooh, I don't okay know five below i didn't either and more on that in a minute mm. so i uh i go uh finally i take the escalator upstairs i go around i find around a corner there is i really i i'm gonna be honest with you andrew i smelled it before i saw it because the amount of marijuana smoke and just a marijuana kind of energy that was radiating from this spirit Halloween was quite something. It smelled so strongly of pot. I couldn't believe it. And again, I'm what I do you live in the modern world. You, do you attribute that the to clientele, the, cust- the clientele going in their blaze? The clientele a- at 5:45 p.m. on Halloween day at the <laughs> Spirit Halloween in Chinatown in Chicago. But they're not they're not like sparking up in the Spirit Halloween, right? They're just showing not up that and, I saw. and it's just hanging onto their clothes, it's following them it around is, like a it's, peanuts it's, cartoon. Essentially, there uh-huh. was some pig penning. <laughs> there uh, was some pig penning. <laughs> I mean, and I, I, would, I only bring it up because it was sort of the last, it was the last sensory expectation I was expecting to have. Like, and, and you know, you, certainly when marijuana was more broadly legalized in places like Portland and Seattle, you had people like me commenting on the fact that it was a much more frequent occurrence to smell it. But I do, I don't know if they've, if they've pioneered some like less pungent weed now, or if people are doing more vaping, which I don't know, processes it differently. I feel like that experience has kind of dropped off in my life a little bit. Until yesterday afternoon, I just was hit by a wall of it. I was also hit, as they by said a... in The Simpsons, it smells like Otto's jacket. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I was hit by was a sign, a big sign on the outside of the door of the Spirit Halloween that said 50% off everything. And then that was yeah, hastily yeah. crossed out and it said 80% off everything. <laughs> this is again about 5 30 on Halloween night. In I want to tell you this spirit Halloween, if like, um, you know, the internet was to be believed, I believe was open for like 1.5 more hours. Like I think it closed at 7 PM. Mm-hmm. You are in and SNL like- territory of the parody of, of spirit Halloween from two weeks ago. But I, but even, but even worse because what I didn't realize was a, a spirit Halloween at 5.30 p.m. on Halloween is essentially uh, – it's a bunch of stuff that's on its way to the dump, but mm-hmm. it's just still for some reason on a rack somewhere. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like I could have probably just shoplifted anything I wanted in there, and they would have given me an escort out mm-hmm. because that's one less thing they have to deal with, mm-hmm. right? Like it's just I, – what I hadn't thought of was – this place will be absolutely picked clean. Like there was almost nothing physically in the store except the stench of marijuana and the Uh, most random assortment of shit you have ever seen. And then people, I'm not talking to one person, Andrew, I'm talking many people on the phone with other people saying, there's nothing at this spirit Halloween. mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I heard one guy go, well, they have stuff, but nothing you would want. <laughs> there, there's one Paula Poundstone outfit left in the corner. <laughs> oh, I still only... think if we had more time, like that was an idea that we had during yesterday's show. And I will take credit for the idea. And if we if and we should. had if we had thought about this longer, like if just a couple more days, I honestly think that would have been an amazing I mean you walk I was thinking about it after our show yesterday you walking out as Paula Poundstone in her iconic outfit would have just slayed not that I'm sure you're Guy Fieri mm-hmm. that's how I say that's it how now. they said I it in the old country they were a very <laughs> they were not a very assertive people in the old country <laughs> not to uh, <laughs> none of them could fully agree not to undercut what you ended up doing because I don't know how that ended up playing but man maybe maybe next year maybe if, if as long as not too many wait wait heads listen to this show maybe you can roll that out next year um I will mention quickly that I didn't end up doing a Peter Sagal for a few reasons one there just was not the there was not the inventory to make no. that happen. You know what I mean? Like they were, there were no bald caps left. There was no, uh, I also didn't leave myself enough time to go find, I guess I could have gone in the marshals and, and tried to get maybe a suit jacket, but guess what? One of the sound guys, Eric dressed up as Peter Segel. Oh, right? there you go. And did the full bald cap. He used spirit gum to attach mm-hmm. the hair around the side of the bald cap. So it would have been actually like, it would have been unfortunate because he did a way better job yeah, than I would have done. That would have been so, bad. Yeah. That was bullet dodged, um, although that was a very good idea by Veeves, I thought. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so I walk into this place, and I immediately realize, like, we have to take evasive action. Like, I don't know what I was looking for in there, but anything I had in my mind as far as preconceived notions was out the window because it was just the most random assortment of, like, just shit. <laughs> like, there. Well, first of all, what they did seem to have a couple leftover things were like dinosaurs that inflate that you wear. I don't know if you've I seen. I know what you're these. talking these about. Yeah, yeah, a, very, they were a very, very big. big yeah, I feel like they've even maybe peaked a little bit now too, but they, they were very big a while back. There was like a handful of those around, but like that would have never worked for a few reasons. I have to wear a headset and a microphone. That was also yeah. part of this calculation. Was it's a like played out now too, honestly. Well, I mean, that I mean, believe me, this is how I ended up with <laughs> Trifieri. Was mm-hmm. all all standards of like, is this a cool uh, costume? Because to be honest with you, I don't even think the Guy Fieri thing is that cool. It was just. Literally the only thing left, it was on the ground underneath something in the back in the like wig department. And I was like, okay, I know what this is. I can work with this, right? Right. Um, We're getting into very Ross dress for less. um, Whose stand up bit is it? Yeah. Sebastian (laughs) Maniscalco, by the way, a Chicago guy. Oh, yeah. Um, Yeah, it was it was just like. I like there was uh, an inflatable you could dress as. A, an, a condom that inflated itself, not unlike one of those dinosaurs, and it says "No Glove, No Love" on it. You didn't. You that didn't was still available. You did not do that one. Again, mostly because of the sonic implications. Uh-huh, I just sure. thought about poor Gary Yeck, uh, our sound guy, trying to fit that headset microphone on me while I'm in this self-inflating <laughs> condom <laughs> costume. <laughs> Plus, one of the other panelists was an IUD, and it just sort of seemed a little bit uh, like yeah, too much. Seriously, yeah. although I mean, listen. Reproductive health is as important now as it's ever been, and I do think we need to keep bringing that point mm-hmm. home in these final days uh-huh. before the election and maybe these final days of this country. But so I'm just like I'm kind of wandering around in a daze, and what I'm really thinking is I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to wear <laughs> one of these bullshit. Like I at one point I picked up a a, a like a, a a Lloyd from Dumb and Dumber outfit that was oh. for some reason still there, and then I was like. Just I don't dumb. Even... You're just going as dumb. You don't have. Right. You don't have enough friend to go as dumb. I, w- I want to tell you, Andrew. This is how how kind of ambivalent I became. So one like I, I, again, Dumb and Dumber is not canon for me. Mm-hmm. I mean, I remember seeing it and thinking it was pretty funny. I do like the movie. Don't get me wrong, but I I can't quote it. I don't. I don't know. Like I just don't know it cold. But I pick up the like. There's like the Jim Carrey, that's Lloyd, I think. I pick up the Lloyd costume. I walk around for a while with the Lloyd costume, and then I I bump into the Jeff Daniels costume. And then I go, is that funnier? And the only difference is one is, so this is like bright orange tuxedo with a top hat. And that's the Lloyd one. And then 
baby blue tuxedo with the top hat is the Jeff Daniels one. I don't know what that character's name is. And I'm literally going like, is one of these materially funnier than the other one? Like, I mean, I was just, I was in a, I was in a, a terrible, terrible situation. And so I just kept sort of aimlessly wandering. Also, they have some pretty scary, like, anim- they're not quite animatronic, but, you know, I guess part of the whole thing with Spirit Halloween is they've got just tons and tons of, like, a, like a six-foot-tall skeleton with, like, a scythe who will say some scary shit to you if you step on this, like, foot oh, pedal. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, I don't like those, yeah. I don't like being and, in a store and then something triggers something to l- cackle at me or scream at me. I hate those. And and I'll tell you this, since we were kids, Andrew, the, like, audio technology, the, like, speaker technology has gotten better because, and the recording, like, some of these things I saw, <laughs> so they also have a kid's section at Spirit Halloween, which, by the way, like, that should be considered a form of birth control. The kids section of the spirit Halloween at five 30 on Halloween day. And just the meltdowns that were happening, the parents, the frazzled parents that were trying to like, again, there was like nothing left in the kid, the parents trying to convince their kid to be, uh, you know, Dora, the Explorer for the third year in a row, because that was like the only costume left. And then the meltdowns that were happening. So I also screaming, saw the- I wanted to be the Jeff Daniels one. And I'm like, too late, bitch. <laughs> Plus, this is an adult double XL. <laughs> that was the other thing. I found like a Beetlejuice costume, but it was adult triple XL. Uh-huh. And then I was like. First of all, you know, there's a lot of Beetlejuice going on this year because yeah. of the, the the new movie and stuff. And I was, again, I was like, it, the problem is the outfits don't come with the wigs, Andrew. This is how they get you. Oh. So I could have gotten a Beetlejuice costume, but it, first of all, would have been probably a bit large on me. And also it's just the like shirt and the pants. It's not the face paint. Mm-hmm. It's not the wig. It's not any of the stuff that you need to do a convincing Beetlejuice. Also, again, not a movie that's like, you know, canon for me. Like, I, I like the movie Beetlejuice. I can't quote it, you know? Mm-hmm. So, uh, so anyway, I find this Guy Fieri wig and goatee on the ground, and I'm like, okay, well, it's a start. So I pick that up. It's and I mean, I, I can't even... Gray. Do they have a Spalding <laughs> Gray costume? They did have a Spalding Gray. <laughs> they had a swimming to Cambodia. It was a full swimming to Cambodia setup. But um, I, I wish I could remember Jr. some. year. It's just like they're just down to the monologuist section. <laughs> there's a there's a Mike Daisy, but then it comes with like a big like a hand where the fingers are crossed and you hold it behind your back like you're lying. I wish I could remember there was one other costume that I picked up that I'm not proud of that I'm not proud of even considering. But it was uh-huh. such a desperate. What would happen is when I would when I would find myself at like a you know these are in a bag right like a like a sealed bag although many of them were unsealed and then back in the bag Ugh. which was like oh this is why this is still here someone tried this on yeah. didn't like it shoved it back in the bag and now this is why no one bought this version of Lloyd from Dumb and Dumber yeah. you <laughs> I know hate this so much this is so gross I'm like, <laughs> like they're oh god what you can there was catch. god I'm I really, it's it's really bumming me out. I should have taken more pictures of this because there was another one. I'll remember it by Monday's show, Andrew. There was another costume that I picked up. Oh, I remember it. <laughs> I think like Stan from South Park. <laughs> Which one is, is Stan the one that dies all the time? No, that's Kenny, I think. Uh. Again, I just love, don't. Yeah, I don't, I'm not in that. World. I don't know. I can't. I mean, I, I I laugh when I watch South Park, or I used to years ago. I can't, you know, quote it to you. I don't. I know it wasn't Eric. I know it wasn't respect my authority guy. So it was like the other one. I think the more normal one, which also is why no one bought it because no one wants to be Stan from South Park. He's just the kind of apoplectic voice of reason. I think that's observing all this craziness. I am. I was never into that show, and maybe it's the people who are such diehard fans that are like, you got to. It's like the smartest show on TV. It's like such it's such trenchant commentary on the culture. And like maybe it is, but it's kind of like quicksand. The more you fervently try to convince me of that, the less I'm interested in hearing somebody say my authority in a funny way. But yeah, South Park is not my world. I just sent you. I was able to locate a photo of the Stan from South Park costume that I carried around for like 12 minutes in this store. And then 
I was like, well, this will be something, but can I quote anything this character says ever? Dude, like, I, no? if you showed up like this, I would have no idea. I, 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 are you a chili <laughs> Chairman Mao? Like, what in the world is this that doesn't... I mean, again, I know I'm not super familiar with that show, but it's just... The, the, it, yeah. The well, photo... I'd say part is, of the problem is it's uh, you're a human and the character's a cartoon. Yeah, and it's just so like it's, this smile... The model is just like this kind of smiling white guy in his third, uh, maybe in his 20s, yeah. sort of waving at the camera, wearing big mittens... Uh, a jacket, but it's kind of got that 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 kind of collar, a red collar that's sort of sticking up, and a blue cap. I would, if you if you showed up like this and gave me a hundred guesses, I would never get there. Well, luckily, I I found this wig, which of course none of it can be called what it's supposed to be because it's Spirit Halloween. And I made the joke both on Instagram and last night to the assembled crowd at Wait Wait that uh, legally I could not refer to myself as the mayor of Flavor Town. I had to call myself the treasurer of taste city. <laughs> um, but I, the other thing was I didn't have a shirt. I, I you'll be surprised to know. I don't own any, own any shirts that are in the sort of Fieri verse, ah, but luckily there was a Dan flashes next door. <laughs> <laughs> would, I would have Actually, it, it probably would have been, I don't know if it would have been cheaper, but like if there would have been, um, uh, there was a, like a Marshall's where I could have probably gone and got something if I needed to. But again, I was in sort of panic mode. So I've got this wig. I'm like, I don't have any shirts, but then I look over and Andrew, what do they have on Markdown collared shirt that you wear? If you're being an adult version of Chucky. Oh, okay. The like murderous uh -huh. doll. Sure. Is that the shirt that I saw? Oh, that that's was the Chucky shirt that shirt. I'm wearing. Oh, if you okay. zoo, if you enhance, enhance, it's covered in knives and guns. Oh, <laughs> I did not. It's a Warren Zevon song. <laughs> uh, uh, it it's it's not it's not Fieri it's not Fieri specific. It's like supposed to be. I guess there must have been. They must have sold out of the Chucky heads that went with the Chucky shirts or something. I don't know, but it's Chucky branded apparel, but it was loud enough mm -hmm. that I figured it would kind of work. They did not sell sunglasses. And so I went out onto Canal Street, which it was so windy at this time, which, yes, I know the Windy City. But anyway, it was like blowing around. I'm looking around. I'm like, I need sunglasses. And I look over and there's this store called Five Below. And. What I think Five Below refers to is everything is less than $5, but I didn't realize that at the time. I was just kind of like, well, that's a weird name for a store. I wonder if that... So I'd already gone in the uh, Marshalls and asked if they had sunglasses. They were like, no, we don't sell sunglasses. And immediately, Andrew, I went into this mode thinking, the American sunglasses industry is dead. Like, in the time it took me to walk from the Marshalls to the Five Below, I had created a whole theory about how it's not profitable to sell sunglasses anymore because of the online business, because of whatever. Like, why in the world would a Marshalls not sell sunglasses, right? Like, I couldn't I, – I assume there had to be some macroeconomic effects mm. or something. And then I looked over at the Five Below, and they just had a bunch of shitty sunglasses in the window. I was like, oh, that Marshalls just doesn't sell sunglasses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're still selling – we're still selling <laughs> – Cheap plastic sunglasses in this country. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. It could be seasonal too, like maybe Marshalls. Yeah. Sort of, I mean, you're beginning. It, but it was weird because the two, the women working behind the counter at the Marshalls were like, I don't know the last time I saw so oh, Like both yeah. of them were like, one takes a drag off of her cigarette. Yeah, right. Sunglasses, you say? That's a product I haven't heard in a long time. So I go to Five Below and they have like, the, well, I sent you a picture. They have the perfect sunglasses. And guess what? They're less than $5. Actually, with tax, they were slightly over $5. It must have been four ninety nine. But I get up to the counter, and I've got my bag from Spirit Halloween. I'm buying these sunglasses that seem like the kind Guy Fieri might wear. By the way, I want to be clear. None of this is a Guy Fieri burn. We have listeners who have pointed out, and I think fairly so, that Guy Fieri seems to be a really solid dude. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, making fun of Guy Fieri... Um, is kind of a, it's a tired old playbook, as I've been saying a lot this week. And I, this was less, I'm not trying to roast him. I just, you know, it's an iconic look and it was the one that was available to me, but I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to be mean to the guy. He sounds like he's a pretty good dude. But anyway, I go up to the counter and I've got the sunglasses and the guy who's checking me out from five below, I go, I go, this is the guy I'm trying to look like. And I show him a picture. Like I need to show him a picture of Guy Fieri. <laughs> But I'm looking at it for a reference point. Like, right. what does this guy do with his, like, you know, what's his jewelry situation? What's his sunglasses situation? And um, Have you seen this I, man? <laughs> I've always wanted to go to a place and show a photo of somebody and say, have you seen this person? So I, like, 
I uh, I show him the photo and I go, do you guys have any jewelry that would work for this? Because, you know, he usually has a lot of kind of like pretty, pretty gaudy, like necklaces and spiky things on. And the guy says to me with an absolute straight face, he goes, we don't sell a lot of men's jewelry. He goes, we have some like women's jewelry, but he goes, I don't think any of it is Fieri worthy. <laughs> I love that. And this was a totally straight comment. Like this was not like he was like. You know, he was like, there is a, a certain level of quality of the jewelry that yeah. Guy Fieri wears. And we don't, I'm sorry, at Five Below in Chicago, we did not feature this Fieri worthy jewelry. And I was like, say less. I and love, I my I love his commitment. Like, he should, you should, absolutely. Th- how this story ends is he should, like, take off his Five Below apron and be like, okay, we're going to solve this together. And then you guys go hit the Windy City together. Cut to montage scene of you <laughs> and, and your new Fieri. Right a loving. mannequin, too, <laughs> on the move. <laughs> exactly. While you guys. He's Meshach Taylor. You're going in and out of stores. He's putting jewelry on you, then shaking his head like, that's not going to do it, and taking it off. And then you're going <laughs> into other stores until you finally, because this man, this is the man. This is your ride or die on this costume he really was great i mean right when i walked in the story was like welcome to five below Mm -hmm. he was dressed kind of like a i don't know exactly what he was it was like a flaming not flaming in the guy fieri sense don't get me wrong Mm -hmm. or i would have bought that shirt right off of his back (laughs) he had sort of like a cat in the hat top hat and a thing Uh and he was clearly enjoying that it was halloween he was really friendly he was a good dude all around and had high standards for the fieri jewelry so all that is to say and we are Unfortunately, we haven't even gotten to statue talk. Maybe we'll have to punt that to Monday, Andrew, and and um, maybe there'll be more developments by Monday that we can talk about with this nationwide statue situation. But I I get the sunglasses, I skip the jewelry, I throw it all in the bag, I hustle back to the hotel, and uh, I get to the theater, and I'm not wearing the wig and the makeup or and the, and the goatee at the theater because. Well, one, I've put the goatee on at the hotel room and immediately realized the tape on the goatee is not sufficient to hold it on my face. It's on my face for like 45 seconds and it's already falling off. Like the goatee is because if you try to talk with the goatee on, it stretches it and it sort of unsticks it. So I'm like, oh, man. So I take it off and I'm like trying to preserve it for at least walking on stage at Wait, Wait. It was so windy that the wig was going to blow off and go blowing down Michigan Mm. and I was going to be running after a Guy Fieri wig. Mm. Um, you know, like for the rest of the night. So I, I get to the theater. Save that for the montage. I can see that being a quick like hit in the montage. You chasing your wig down the street. Exactly. Yeah. And I get into the, I, I knock on the back door. They let me in the theater. And uh, I walk in and immediately observe that no one is dressed up. Yeah. <laughs> Emmy, dressed totally normally, looking mm. very cute and normal. Sagal, forget it. Bill Curtis looking great per always. Thankfully, Brian Babylon emerges from the bathroom and he does have on like a some kind of a Dragon Ball Z kind of shoulder pad situation. Okay. So I was like, whew, thank you, sir. But like, basically, I was under this impression that I had to get dressed up or I was going to be letting everyone down. It turned out no one actually cared. <laughs> it was not really a thing. I'm I'm glad for Brian that at least I was dressed up. But it was not like the stat. It wasn't like everybody. And the, the there was a handful of people dressed up in the audience. But um, it turned out that like this, like is often the case with this stuff, I had overblown it in my mind and it would have also been fine if I would have just shown up normal old me. Nobody would have really cared one way or the other. Thankfully, though, Andrew, the guy who dressed up as Peter Sagal had some extra spirit gum. Nice. I was going to say you need spirit gum for that goatee. What are the chances that I'm backstage and Colin Miller, the very, very fine wait, wait staffer and friend of mine, I'm complaining about this goatee not staying on. He goes, well, you know, the guy who's being Sagal has spirit gum. And I was like, what? Mm-hmm. I was like, get me that spirit gum mm-hmm. immediately. Then I'm go. I'm a running around backstage asking everyone, has anyone ever used spirit gum? Yeah, I was going to say, people? I only know that as a concept. I would have no, if somebody gave me a bunch, I I don't, is it like rubber cement? It's, not, is it's it like, like rubber cement. It is it's like, not oh, that's a guess. Okay. I yeah, I'd never used it either. I assumed it was more like I don't know what I thought it was, but it's it's like rubber cement but more liquidy and it's in a little vial and it's very it's very fragrant. It smells real chemically, very mm-hmm. like, you know, you can kind of imagine it. So then I'm like I'm walking around with this thing of rubber of of uh, the thing of spirit gum, this Guy Fieri goatee. I've never put this on in my life. I go, "Do I put it on the goatee? Do I put it on myself? Do I need to let it cure?" And all anyone will tell me is 
that stuff will never come off your face. You oh, are okay. never getting that off your face. And now um, our uh, uh, Gary Yek, our, our technical director, is going, two minutes, two minutes. And I'm just like, R-, it's like, okay, we'll introduce a new stress stream to the whole thing. Mm-hmm. You're carrying around a goatee and spirit gum, and you don't know how to use it, and it's two minutes before you're supposed to go on stage. So everyone's like, g- be very sparing with the spirit gum. And so I'm super being sparing, and it's not sticking. And now I'm panicking. Now it's like, one minute! So then I'm just like, screw it. So I'm just like, slathering just it on. Pouring it on. I'm just, I'm drinking some of it. Just, mm-hmm. I don't know, let's see. Sure. And then I stick the thing on, and it finally sticks. And I did something actually very smart, I thought, which was I only really stuck the mustache part and the sides, not the bottom, because that's what was constricting my uh-huh. my speech. Because the other thing was, I was like, I can't go through like two hours of recording Wait, Wait, and my speech is impacted by this goatee that no one can see nor will be referenced mm-hmm. on the radio show. I was like, mm-hmm. I'm not going to let this make me have trouble trying to do my job of being a panelist. So I got it to stay on and got out there and uh, I got a, a, a pretty, I thought, a pretty strong reaction from the crowd and uh, got to wear uh, my outfit for Brian Jordan Alvarez. Um, he also didn't comment on it, but I think he was impressed. He was the not my job guest, the sitting guy. Um, and uh, anyway, it was a great night all around. And, uh, and, and, and that was pretty much I will also mention spirit gum technology must have come a long mm, way mm. because I pulled the thing off and you can see me. And yeah, it seems fine. Pretty much normal. Yeah. I was I was in the moments that I was panicking and applying this goatee with a lot of spirit gum. I thought, well, I know what tomorrow's TBTL topic is. It is Luke still has a mm-hmm. Guy Fieri goatee glued right. to his face. But uh, but anyway, here I am. Uh, I survived, and um, that was my Thursday night. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. You know, I'm looking at the clock here, Luke, and I think we got to make today's show sort of a bottle episode, maybe, maybe a no-breaker. We'll have to thank our daily donors uh, tomorrow, maybe, because you have a flight oh, okay. to catch, and I'm always nervous about your flights. I appreciate and it's your like, you know, chair. Chicago. It's I can not take exactly the donors. Easy. I've got are time. You, are you sure? I've got I've got five minutes and a dream. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> Have the music. That's how Guy Fieri started his restaurant sure, empire. Absolutely. He had five minutes. He had a fajita. Ta- he had a uh, sushi taco and a dream. I've always and, wanted. Uh, to, he made it all happen. I've always wanted to say this. Hit it, Leany. Thank you for being a ten. All right, now you have uh, effectively fired the donor music, but now oh, I need to effectively I thought fire I was up being, my email program. I thought I was being so like smooth and clever and helpful, and instead I you were. kind of hung you out to dry. No, 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 you didn't. I asked you. I I said Andrew hit it, and then you said Leany hit it. I just it. really wanted to and say now hit I just it, Leany. Need... That's just such a fun thing to say. That is a fun say. thing to say. Yeah. While I'm getting the donors together, I'll just tell you this in, uh, as it relates to the statues. It's actually turning into kind of a whole thing. They put one of them up in Portland and one in Philadelphia. And what they did, Andrew, that was so genius, and it's the same group of people. I don't think they had permits for the Philly and Portland one, but what they did was they put Donald Trump up being kind of lascivious, and they put him near an existing statue that happened to depict the female form. I saw that one. Yeah, that was at the Philly one. Uh, the Philly one, and then there's like a version of There was a version of oh, it in same, Portland near a statue deal. in Portland yeah. that was similar. Yeah. Do you think— I know we don't have time to really get into it, but does that kind of elevate it for you? I thought those were visually pretty interesting. I didn't dig deep into those stories, so my feelings on the whole thing hasn't cha- haven't changed much. Although I don't really know what my feelings are necessarily, other than um, it doesn't it does it doesn't move me too much one way or the other. While we're sort of stalling here and sort of I've I've got I've got the thing, donors now. I did want to correct one thing, and this again hangs you out to dry a little bit. But what uh, I, I've heard from I'm sorry, some this listeners, show is over. <laughs> I'm out of time. I um, <laughs> I heard from a couple of listeners who were saying whatever whatever story you heard about astronauts coming back down to earth they are not the ones who are stuck in space those guys are still up in the oh. in the in the space station according to an article oh, that was geez. posted like two days ago and it says that they're planning oh. on coming down in 2025 at some point oh so, my bad Sorry yeah i don't that. i don't know who i don't know who came down from space that's also maybe it was a spaceman <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I don't know what but i just want to get a back space <laughs> man you know what this is this is what happens andrew when i spend too much time on tiktok I'm sure that I uh, saw the clip on TikTok, and it was, who knows mm, what the timestamp on it was. I mean, it might have been a cosmonaut. Uh, yeah, it might have been that dog. It was black and white. They're filming all that in black and white now, <laughs> right? right? Sure. Well, sure. it's all done on a soundstage. Leany hit it. Thank you for being a 10. 
I regret the error, but you know who forgives me, Andrew? Mm. Dana Soretsky of Lexington, Kentucky. Hey, Dana, thank you for supporting the show. Go Wildcats. Uh, Dana and the rest of these folks that we're reading today are supporting TBTL with a donation, and uh, it's how we are able to uh, to do the show. And we, we are very, very appreciative on this Friday. Thanks also to Christina Sampson in Everett, Washington. Hey, just a bit north of here. Can you that's see right. me waving? Yes, that's where the uh, Everett High Seagulls are, which oh. is where my basketball coach, Mr. Collard, was a star. And I know that that's one of the th- one of the things that attracted Christina to Everett, Washington. Mm-hmm. Um, Ruthie Benton oh. in Los Angeles, California. Longtime Sunny. donor and friend of the show. Thank that's you. That's right. Thanks, Ruthie. Thanks to Catherine Harvey, who's in Seattle, Washington. Nice. Uh, that's a place where I'm a high school star, uh, as I... Uh, mm-hmm was the f- 15th man on the Nathan Hale basketball team um, and got a lot of attention for that. I hit one shot. I hit one half court shot during a summer league game and it was like Rudy. <laughs> it was the, like the good, cause I played at the small school and I was like pretty good there. And then I transferred to like the big school that was actually the best basketball team in the state that mm-hmm. year. And I was so bad mm-hmm. compared to everyone else that I remember hitting a shot and they practically carried me off the court, like, and it was halftime of a summer league game. <laughs> but it was a half court shot. It was a really, really. It was like a three quarter court shot. It was just uh, like the buzzer was, you know. Uh-huh. And it wasn't. I can't stress this enough. It was not impactful. Mm-hmm. I remember we were playing Mount Sai and we were winning by forty points, which was how I was in the game. Still, though, former President Obama would have appreciated that you took that that game seriously, yes, he would have. even though it didn't count for anything. Exactly. He and I are in alignment on that mm-hmm. and so many other things. As is, and I don't know really where Michelle Jenkins comes down on things, but I assume the right side of things mm-hmm. because Michelle is donating to TBTL and is out there in Sammamish, Washington out yes. there. I don't know if that's technically on the plateau or not, but that's um, that's beautiful country out there. Thanks, Michelle. And then James West is in Thornton, Colorado. Solid name, James West of Thor. Have you yes. considered writing cowboy fiction? I was also thinking that that's good, that Colorado, I consider Colorado to be a, a Western state. Is Colorado a Western state? I refer to, to me it is. as a Western state. I mean, listen, there somebody. was a period when Kansas was probably the West, right? <laughs> well, right, exactly. <laughs> if you read The Great Gatsby, Ohio was West. Um, so, <laughs> Precisely. Um, so, yeah, but anyway, I'm glad that James is, in, you know, it would just be a little, and listen, we would obviously appreciate and accept James's donation no matter where he lived, but it would be mm-hmm. different if it was like James West in New Hampshire. You know what I mean? Right. Colorado yeah, feels Yeah, we appreciate fitting. James aligning his last name to the region he's in yeah. and also making time to donate to TBTL. So Absolutely. thanks, James. We appreciate thank you. James. You. All right. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks for uh, a fun week of broadcasting. Again, yesterday's show was really fun. Thanks for piecing that all together. Uh, Every once in a while, we have to turn in a highly produced program. (laughs) Yes. Prove we still can. Just just calm down on that. People are going to go back and listen and be like, wait, that was highly produced? That (laughs) was highly produced? These? These was your master plan? <laughs> no, this is just a goof. Maybe that's my that was a, that was a decent impression. I that was to. pretty good. That's pretty good. But do you, do you even right. know the name of the character that? Do you know what? No, that's I have from? literally no. Is that Gru? Who is that? <laughs> no, that's uh, that's somebody from Archer. But I don't uh, oh, I don't have okay. that drop in front of me. But yeah, I have no idea even that character's name. Who says that? Um. Well, maybe we'll find out on Monday. Yes. Sir. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. Hey, thanks for being part of TBTL. This brings us to the end of our broadcast week. But guess what? We're going to be back here on Monday with more imaginary radio for you. Um. So we'll see you then. In the meantime, have a great weekend. Take care of yourselves. And please remember, no mountain too tall. And good luck to all. And this? This is your master plan. Huh? Oh, no, no. Now, this is a whole other awesome thing. This, This is just a goof. Later, Tater. Power out.